In this video, I'm going to show you how to write ending chords for your big band charts. Hi, I'm Elliot Deutsch, a composer and arranger from Los Angeles. I lead my own group called the Pandemonium Big Band, and I'm a, bu I'm a busy arranger writing for different artists and, and so on. Uh, <laughs> Believe it or not, this is a common question that I got asked. Uh, several people wanted to know, how do you write the ending chord to a big band chart? Uh, so, <laughs> here's, the, here's my response. But before I get into it, uh, why don't you hit subscribe? <laughs> it, it helps me a lot. If you're not subscribed, do it now. Uh, that, you know, we could be friends forever. <laughs> I don't know. That's dumb. Ending chords. So while there's no definitive right way to end a chart, uh, there are some really, really super common ways to end a chart. Uh, and I'll show you some examples from my uh, CDs and releases with Pandemonium Big Band and the Elliott Deutsch Big Band. And hopefully it'll give you an idea of how I do it and give you some ideas for how you can do it. The most common chord that I have at the end of my charts is a major 13 sharp 11 chord. So major 13 sharp 11. If you're not really, you know, versed in jazz harmony, that is a scary chord. So let's break it down. So first of all, major. Let's do an example. So C, C major. <laughs> so C major 13, when you have a number that's higher than seven, first of all, it's gonna be an odd number. <laughs> and second of all, it implies that other numbers that are smaller than it exist. So if you have a 13, if you have a major 13, it implies that there's a major seven. You have a C, E, G, and B natural. So we'll start there. Then you have the ninth. I know, I know we didn't say nine, but it's implied when you say 13. So a C major 13 sharp 11. Again, C, E, G, B natural, then D natural, you know, our nine. Uh, we'll get to the 11th in a second. Um, and the 13th, which is the same as the six. Um, so an A. Now, why didn't I just write <laughs> C6? Well, there's a difference. C6 implies that, you, that you're using the sixth in place of the seventh, and that's a useful chord in and of itself. But with ending chords, you can get away with writing a chord that is considerably more rich than you necessarily can uh, just normally in the middle of the chart. If you've watched my other videos, and I recommend that you do, <laughs> the, certainly the ones in this series, uh, keep in mind, that I have, I've talked about this a bunch of times, the quicker that a particular melody is moving, the tighter the harmony you want to use, which is, if you're, if you're doing something that's faster than maybe a medium swing, you're gonna use mostly closed voicing. And in the same way, you don't wanna use chords that are overly rich because it, it kind of muddies what's going on in the orchestration. Now, of course, as I'm saying this, someone's gonna be screaming at their computer screen, but what about Thad Jones and you know all these other people that, that use really rich harmonies in really fast things? I'm, I'm just talking rule of thumb here. Um, if, if you're trying to write concisely in a way that works every time, uh, it's best to avoid the really, really, you know, six, seven note chord harmonies, um, unless you're either the piece is moving really, really slowly, um, or if it's the last note of the piece. So you can get away with it on the very last note, because no matter how fast you were going, either the last note is a fermata, which means you <laughs> instantly, it's really slow, but <laughs> you can do a really crazy chord right here, um, or or you just hit it, but it, the sound still like reverberates in the concert hall or <laughs> the digital reverb from Logic. Um, but it it reverberates and gives it it gets a chance to kind of your ears can adjust to this you know really complicated chord. Uh, because you're given time to, because you know the song's over. So even in a piece where I'm writing five note chords through the whole song, <laughs> you know, like uh, you know, G9 is a five note chord because it's G, B, D, F, and A, and there's no more notes in it than that, so it's five notes. Um, so while, and then if you if you alter it, you're just taking those notes and changing them, so it's still a five note chord. But a, a 13 chord is a six note chord, and a 13 sharp 11. Uh, <laughs> 
is a seven note chord. So you're getting pretty complicated at that point. So you can, it's difficult to use them in the main part of the piece, but you can definitely use them at the end. And that's kind of common practice on jazz band arrangements. So let's talk about how to actually construct your 13 sharp 11 chord. The 11th, if you count up, um, is the same as the 4th, right? Um, so in a minor chord, you use the regular 11th and it sounds wonderful. On a major chord, the 4th and the 3rd are a half step away. The 4th makes it sound, makes the, the chord sound like a suspension <laughs> or just, you know, quite frankly, sounds like a wrong note. But the sharp 11, on the other hand, adds a whole bunch of richness. Now, unless you, you're really entrenched in jazz harmony, you might also be thinking, it's the same as the flatted fifth, and enharmonically you're right, but functionally, <laughs> they're very different. So the first difference between the sharp 11 and the flatted fifth is that if you have a flat five alteration written on a chord, that implies that, it is, that you're taking the fifth and lowering it by a half step. If you, if you, if you have a sharp 11 alteration, on a chord or, or extension, I guess we should call it. Um, that implies that you have both the fifth and the sharp 11 in that chord. So for instance, on our C major, or C major 13 sharp 11 chord, you have both a G natural, because that's the fifth of that chord, and an F sharp, because that's the sharp 11. So let's talk about how to actually construct it. And this is, this is where the magic happens. <laughs> So let's go over to the piano. Here's your, your, your C major seven, right? I mean, uh, C, E, G, and B. I'm just gonna do it all root position. So C major seven. Now if we add the ninth, it's a D. The 13, oh sorry, the sharp 11 is your F sharp. And your 13th is your A, right? And you get this sound, which is beautiful, right? <laughs> it's a beautiful sound, um, but also, uh, a, a very complex sound, right? So, uh, one thing I, I, this is really important that you notice is that if you, if you look at just um, the 9th, the sharp 11th, and the 13th, it's a major triad. <laughs> um, we call this an upper structure triad. Um, so our lower structure <laughs> is uh, C major 7, and our upper structure is D major triad, right? And together you get... which is a beautiful ending chord to use in, in, a, in a jazz band chart. The, the big tricky part is where do you put the sharp 11? So the, <laughs> the F sharp in our, in our uh, C major 13 sharp 11 example is going to fight with the regular fifth if they're in the same octave. Similarly to how we would deal with a sharp nine not fighting with the major third in a uh, sharp seven sharp nine chord, in a 13 sharp 11 chord, <laughs> what you want is for the sharp 11 to be in a higher octave than the fifth. So the way we usually do this is we put the ninth, the sharp 11th and the 13th in the trumpets as a triad. I know you have four trumpets, but because on these last chords, generally the trumpets are playing pretty high, at least the first trumpet, we'll put first trumpet and fourth trumpet in octaves and fill out the other two notes with the rest of that triad. And you can invert it however makes sense for your piece. If you're doing a C major 13 sharp 11 on the last, on your last chord, you're gonna have a D major triad as your upper structure triad. If you put the F sharp on top, right, then you're gonna have um, F sharp, D, A, and another F sharp, and that's gonna be your trumpets. I would place the uh, trombones and saxophones, I would voice them without the 13th or the sharp 11th. <laughs> voice them as a major nine chord, um, skipping the root and, and replacing it with the ninth in your closed voicing below. And that's going to work really, really well. <laughs> uh, and that's upper structure triads. Uh, by the way, uh, equally good, but I don't use it in my charts frequently, um, is to end on a 13 sharp 11 chord, as opposed to a major 13 sharp 11. The only difference is, instead of a major seven, you have a dominant seven. 
It doesn't really sound that different from the Major 13 Sharp 11, but it's got a slightly different character, and for some pieces, that one is better. So definitely try them out when you're writing your ending chord for your big band arrangement. All right, before we're done, I have a couple more ideas I want to give you. First of all, uh, <laughs> you can end a big band chart with a unison octaves hit or note. Uh, you, no, there's nothing that says it has to be super complicated. Sometimes it's really hip to just hit a big fat octave at the end. You know, I've also ended charts with an open fifth. I'll do uh, two thirds of the band on the root, and then the, the last third of the band, I don't know, three or four horns, on the fifth in various octaves. And it gives a really, really powerful uh, open fifth. Sounds similar to the octaves, but it's, it has more power because you've got the fifth in there. An open, an open fifth is more powerful than uh, just octave unison. <laughs> What else do I like to do? Sometimes it's really, really fun to end with a regular major triad at the end. It, it can be kind of uh, a distinctive ending chord on a chart that, uh, that uses it. And here's an example of that. All right, I hope this helped. <laughs> I hope give you some great ideas. If you enjoyed this lesson, please hit subscribe and hit the like button, I think is important for some reason. <laughs> Analytics. Um, also, uh, I've recently launched a Patreon uh, for uh, these lessons. I've got some great rewards. Please check it out and join. I could really use the support and uh, thank you. <laughs> Until next time, bye.